Cobalt version 8 is compatible with Windows 7 consoles only. You can determine if you have a Windows 7 machine by checking for two Ethernet ports on the back of the console. All ETC Nomad pucks are compatible. Because this means there will be users on version 7 out there, as well as folks using version 8.0, existing tutorial videos will remain showing the older screens. The way Cobalt works is still the same, except for the new screen navigation, which I'll explain in this video, and the new magic sheets, which replace the older channel layout concept, explained in a separate video. This is the Cobalt version 8 welcome screen. You can see we have the offline button, we have the system settings button, the system shutdown button, and in the center of the screen, a number of buttons may appear which correspond to the available sessions, which take the place of the older logical network settings. All systems will start with a start cobalt button as a default. So we'll start cobalt. We'll start with a new show with a one-to-one -one patch. And we'll click Let's Begin. So you can see our screens look a little different. In version 8, we have made the screens more user definable. The old way that Cobalt and Congo worked was to give you four dock areas around the edges of the screen. These were fixed to each display and could contain things like the browser, for example, or selected live channels, or masters or independents, that sort of thing. All of that dot content has moved into tabs, and we now give you the opportunity to set up tab areas on your screens. And that's done by clicking the tab area dropdown. What you see in the dropdown are all the different combinations of tab areas you can choose for an individual screen. This dropdown appears on each and every screen in your system, whether it's an ETC Nomad system, the internal screens on a console, or external screens on a console. Each one can have a different layout. If I start very simply with a single, single tab area, you'll notice that from my default layout, which showed you the direct selects and the main playback, similar to the way version 7 worked, both of those tabs are now available here in a single full screen space. If I want to split tabs, as we had them before, instead of using the tab and down arrow command from the previous systems, I would choose either the horizontal split or the vertical split from this drop-down menu. So we'll put it back. And now you can see both tabs are on the top half of the screen. And in the bottom half of the screen, I have an empty tab area. You can add items to a tab area by using the open and focus tab dialog which pops up whenever you hit this plus key. These are often used tabs, but not all of them. Uh, so we could choose to open up a new view, for example, the master view, by just touching it in that view. Or we can move tabs into empty areas by using drag and drop or keyboard commands. I'll close this view with a mouse just to show that you can do it. And I can take my direct selects, for example, and I can drag them down into this view or as before, tab and left and right arrow will move that tab from one position to the next and from one screen to the next. I can also resize tab areas. I can do this again either with a mouse or with touch commands. With a mouse, it's very quick. I grab the edge of a tab and simply scroll it up and down, as you might expect in any Windows-based system. Or I can go back into that menu and choose the resize icon. And that gives me grab handles on each of my tabs that I can then move with a finger. Once I've resized my tabs the way I like, I simply touch that menu item again and the resize button goes away. I'll show you a couple of others. This is a Cobalt 10, which has reasonably small screens. So I wouldn't necessarily use some of these more complex setups on a Cobalt 10 screen, but with a Cobalt 10, uh, or an ETC Nomad or Cobalt 20 uh, on external screens or on the larger internal screens, some of these more complex setups are, uh, are perfectly usable. Here they're just a little small. So we'll pick a simple one. Here's three areas with two split on the side horizontally and one larger, taller area on the right-hand side. Once again, the same tabs that I had open before are simply dropped into those spaces 
as available. I may have to move them around to get this thing looking the way I want. So just as before, I can resize, give myself a small area at the bottom, for example, and populate it with something interesting like, for example, my selected live channels. And when I select a channel, here's where resize comes in handy. I can make that a little bigger so I ensure that I actually see some content in that screen. But as you can see, this is far more customizable than the previous system was. What this does mean for older show files is that your existing screen layouts won't translate into the system, so you'll have to rebuild those, but that's pretty easy to do. The screen layouts allow you to record the state of all of the monitors connected to your system. And on a Cobalt 10 or on a Cobalt 20, you have the six buttons in the center of the console between the monitors where you get the first screen layouts. Uh, otherwise, screen layouts are available as a direct select type. Now you'll notice this particular direct select view doesn't exactly fit perfectly within this tab area. Up in each tab area's upper right hand corner, there is a button that you can use to pop that tab area into a full screen size. This is also available with the tab up command. Uh, tab up and tab down used to be used to split two tabs in a single tab area. We don't do that anymore. We use the drop down menu, but what tab up and down will allow you to do is to maximize the current selected tab and then restore it to your previous screen layout. So I just use tab and down. This is a toggle on the screen as well tapping that upper right hand corner icon. So I can open that up and see very quickly the entire direct selects pane without losing the configuration underneath of all of my other tabs and choose the screen layouts option as uh, a direct select type if I wish. We'll go back again. To store this particular setup right now as a screen layout, I would simply press and hold the record key and press one of the six buttons in the center if I want it to be screens one through six, the ones I go to most often, or I can press and hold record and record to a button in the direct select panel as well. These screens can be named in the browser. The browser is now a pop-up that's available on every single screen. It doesn't occupy a dock. It can be placed as a tab onto a screen and recorded into a screen layout if you prefer to work that way, or you can simply hit the browser key to open the browser on the current screen, or conversely, hit the button in the upper right-hand corner that opens the browser of the screen of your choice. Screens are stored under general settings. If I open this list, I can give this screen a name, my screen. And now you'll see that's the name that appears in the direct selects. So I can quickly recall specific screens as I need to. As in the past, we still recommend that you keep the number of open tabs to a reasonable number during operation. Every tab that's open is something the console has to think about. So instead of mapping all five possible screens on your Cobalt console to having 18,000 areas, we recommend that you maximize your customizability but minimize your tabs if at all possible and use screen layouts in order to switch between tab configurations as you need to. So for example, you might have a programming set of tabs and a patching set of tabs and a playback set of tabs but not necessarily every single one of those tabs open in one screen layout at one time.